Hey guys, it's Eric from Pixel Planet Studios, and today we're going to do a demo of the G Scatter add on from Grasswall 3D. This is a totally free Blender add on that is really powerful, and we're going to be using it in some exciting tutorials on our channel coming up, so we wanted to give you a brief overview. Let's get started. So before we get started today, let's be sure we're using the most recent version of Blender. I'm currently using 3.21, but anything after 3.2 should work with the current version of the add-on. And after you download the add-on from Grasswald, be sure to install it in Preferences, Add-ons, Install, and grab that zip. I'm currently using the 060 version of the G-Scatter add-on. And once that's installed, you're ready to go. All right, so we are starting with a cute cottage that I got from CG Trader. There'll be a download link in the description. And we have a plane that I deformed and added some subdivisions to, and I applied a simple grass texture. To start using G-Scatter, we're gonna select it from our side menu here. And the first step is to select our emitter object, which in our case will be the plane. Now with this selected, G-Scatter will know to populate this object. Uh, and if we select the asset browser button, you'll see a library of free, and in our case, some paid assets from Grasswall 3D. These are all very high quality, and, and right out of the box, uh, it can help make your scene uh, realistic. Let's look around here and grab a grass asset. We are gonna be using the clump style, and to keep things faster, I'll drop the detail to low and the shader quality to medium. And then let's hit scatter selected, and we can click off this window. And immediately this populates our emitter uh, with proxies of our selected grass asset. And if we move to the Geometry tab and turn off Proxies, you can see what the grass will look like. Before we re-enable Proxies, let's scale these up. And let's look at the Distribution tab. You'll see there are two density levels, one for the viewport and one for the render. These are straightforward, but uh, lets you work quickly in the Blender viewport while using a fraction of the rendered amount. Now using Proxies, I like to raise the viewport amount just to get a sense of the density. Uh, and then once I have a value I like, I apply that to the rendered amount and then bring the viewport density back down. All right, so let's take a look at what we have. And with only a couple clicks, we've populated our scene with grass and it's looking decent. I think the density is appropriate and now we can start adding more details. Let's apply some effects to our grass. I'll increase the viewport density so I can better see the changes and then Inside G-Scatter, there's an effects panel, and this is where you can really customize the scattering, um, and I really recommend you play around with all these options. Uh, but today we're gonna apply the Musgrave noise to our density. Now let's play with the scale and blend mode. And as you can see, these options will give you lots of variety. All right, this is looking pretty good. Uh, we're also gonna add camera calling. If you've never used this before, it'll isolate the scattered assets to just what's within your camera view. That'll help things move faster. With our camera selected, you can see how this effect works as we move the camera. I also like to add buffer so that there's no popping of assets as the camera moves, you know, especially if we're gonna apply some movement to these assets. All right, with those changes, let's bring the viewport density back down and let's add a rotation effect. We're gonna select wind and then go back to the camera view and you can see what this looks like. So this effect is giving a, a rotation range to each asset and applying those values at a specific speed and level of detail. Uh, and it looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna tweak the settings a little bit just to make it fit my scene. And if we take a closer look, you can see there's a problem with some intersections happening. Uh, now, if we were further away, you probably wouldn't notice this, but with our camera close to the ground, um, we're gonna change our minimum distance this will place assets at a minimum distance from each other. In our case, this will just be applied so they don't intersect. Okay, with that set, let's add another asset. I'm gonna pick these dandelions. We'll apply camera calling. And to more precisely choose where these assets are located, let's apply a weight mask. Now, if we had a weight map already created, we could select that, or we can choose this paint option, which creates a new map. And we can just paint on the geometry. You'll wanna make sure you have enough subdivisions and vertexes to, to apply this paint. 
but as we apply it, you can see these proxies populating, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's adjust the scale by turning off the proxy mode. That's looking good. Now let's play with the density. And when you have the values you like, let's render this again. Now I had the viewport turned off for the grass, but uh, both render toggles are still on, so they'll appear in the render. Now this is looking more interesting. I do want to fill in the ground where our noise removed the grass. Uh, so let's go back and add another asset. Let's pick uh, these small dandelions. I'm going to adjust the scale and density until most of the ground is covered. Let's apply camera calling one more time. And then lastly, let's increase the grass density just a little bit. All right, awesome. Uh, now let's add a custom asset for the background. So inside my scene, I also have a tree object you can see here. And you can scatter any custom object you have uh, just by selecting it and then hitting the plus icon here. And boom, we have a forest. <laughs> Um, so initially it's hard to see what we have. Uh, I'm going to reduce the density. And it appears that our trees are under the ground, so I think we need to fix the rotation. I'll change the x-axis to 90 degrees, and then change the random rotation so that they can spin on their vertical axis, but only kind of pivot on the other two. Let's re-enable proxies, and add camera calling again. Alright, great. And if we increase our viewport density, you can see that our cottage is completely covered, and that's certainly not what we want. Um, there's a few ways to fix this, but I want to show you another distribution effect. It's called proximity. So this effect changes the density of assets in relation to another object. So if I select this avoid mesh, and you can kind of see that here, This will allow you to determine a distance from an object that you want or don't want the assets to be scattered. So by changing the density multiplier and the proximity curve, you can choose to have the assets where you want in relation to that object. Now I want to be sure the assets aren't too close to the camera or obstructing the view, so I'm going to scale up the proximity shape and move it a little closer to the camera. All right, let's hop into camera view. And let's play with the scale and density options until we have a look we want. And let's take a look. All right, this is close, but I want to vary the scale of the trees to be a little more interesting and maybe make the cottage appear like it's isolated in the woods. I'm gonna change some of these things. And there we go. So in just a few steps, you can quickly populate your scene using the G-Scatter add-on. Thanks for watching the tutorial. And if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. And if you have any questions or want us to cover something else, throw a comment down below. As I mentioned earlier, we have some exciting tutorials coming up. So please stay tuned for more. And we'll see you next time. Make sure you check out Eric's other Blender content and my After Effects tools and tutorials.